The picture that I took is quite similar to this one. Here you can also see the shadow of Io. Here you can see I clearly managed to capture the ice caps and some features on the ground. And it was not even that close to the planet. Now for those of you which want to do it yourself by using these applications, I'll go now to my laptop and show you directly with the screen share how to get that captured video into a really nice picture which is ready for display. Let's get to it. There are three steps in capturing one single image of a planet. First is the capture of the data. The next step after that is called stacking, where we take all of these frames, put them all together, construct one single picture. And in the final step, it's called sharpening. We take another program where we take this picture, which has a lot of data, and we do some mathematical operations called wavelets and deduce and sharpen the image to that final nice picture that you see here. Now, for those of you which want to do it yourself by using these applications, I'll go now to my laptop and show you directly with the screen share how to get that captured video into a really nice picture which is ready for display. Let's get to it. All right, let the boring stuff begin. I hate this part. Okay, step number one, we verify that the captured video is okay. Here we can clearly see the planet with a lot of details already. I can already see the shadow, but it's a lot of stuff. Here you can see it's traveling all uh, over the place. And if that's using tracking, if you're not using tracking, it will be going from one side to the next very fast. And now we need to somehow crop that planet, put it into one place so we can do some stacking. What we are going to do, we are using PIP, it's planetary information processing, whatever, whatever. It's a program which is quite nice. Here we pick the right video, it's 2120. And let's do some stuff. All right, here I can see the planet. It's already nicely cut. What I want to do is go through the options. Take out the bio raw image. This is useful only if you're using a camera without compression, which is capturing in raw format, which we are too poor to do. So <laughs> we don't need this. Here you make sure that planetary is checked. We don't need dark and flat files and flat files. This is for dark. Uh, space processing. Some processing options. Enable cropping. Here we can see it's too tight. Ideally we want to give it some more space. So the final video will be 600 by 600. This will give us some more space. Ideally we want to click test object. Here we can see that the testing of uh, the planet is nice, it's correctly uh, detecting the planet in the video. Quality, don't bother about quality because quality will be done later in AutoStacker, another program. Animation options, play all frames in forward options, that's fine. Output, here you can create your directory where it should go. Create some subdirectory if you want. We use the same frame rate again. Keep everything as it is and it will save into AVI format. And that's it. After this, we are clicking start processing. And when you are done processing, you will find your new video in the space where you indicated. Now, I've already done this because I don't want to wait an hour on my laptop to do this processing. So let's have a look at the final video after processing. Yeah, here it is. Once you're done, you should be having something like that. Okay, now you see that the planet is really nicely in the center. It's not moving anywhere. It's just going through all the frames that you need. The idea now is to take all of these frames, thousands of frames, and stack them into one single picture, which will be done for further processing. 
for this we are going to use auto stacker 3 here we are going to load the video that we just processed now we are going to click analyze it's going to take quite a lot of time unfortunately Okay, now what AutoStacker has done, it has automatically found the best frames for stacking. Down here you can see the quality graph and typically I like to use only the frames which are at least 50% quality. In this case it's the top 24%. And here you are going to stack the first 25%. We're going to turn off the drizzle, that's only for case where it's uh, not sampled enough. Again, don't bother about it. Everything, just leave it mostly as it is right here. Now what you want to do is place some alignment points. What this does is quite interesting. It is going to take every uh, single square and use uh, parts of different frames where the quality is the highest long story short it will make sure that it you are using only the best of the best uh, pieces of the frames that you have there you might want to click analyze once again so it's centered a, a little bit better but after that that's pretty much it all you have to do after that let's put it at 24 is simply click stack wait for the process to finish and when you go back to the same place you're going to find your completed image let's have a look at that completed image as you can see the image is quite blurry which is fine this means uh, the stacking went well and it contains a lot of information to get the best out of this image what we need to do is a final step so-called sharpening for this we are going to use Registax 6 we don't want to stretch intensity levels all right now what we have is something called wavelets I recommend using the linked wavelets for maximum power. We can use show full image. And now when we start sliding with these sliders, you're going to see the planet will start getting sharper. What you want to do is keep playing around with it. If you take it too far, we end up with the notorious potato. So you want, you might want also to put some denoising. Every single image is really different and it's always a matter of finding the most ideal combination to get the best result. It's one of those uh, pieces where it's not very fun, especially with a slow laptop like mine. So let me show you how it looks like in the end with some... Uh, optimized setting which I have found out to work perfectly for this picture alone so here we can see it's already starting to look a lot better let's try a different one oh not good So, <clears throat> yeah, it's a matter of just 
playing around with this until you find out what is the best place. Yeah, let's let, let's keep it something like this. Now, what you also want to do is maybe RGB balance, uh, balance the RGB colors. The noise ringing always helps to get rid of some of the artifacts. Starting to look good. What we also want to do is compress the histogram, stretch a little bit the uh, intensity. So, yeah, it gets a little bit more contrast and details and hides some of the stuff which was not that pretty, especially around the edges. Okay, I think we are looking nice. Well, depends on your definition of nice, but that's as good as, uh, that's as good as we are going to get. Yeah, and I think that's as good as we are going to get with this picture. Then we can do a do all at the end. Just do the entire processing. Then we save the picture somewhere. Save it here with a little bit different. And yeah, that, that's pretty much the final picture. We can do some final touch-ups with another program which I like to use. But after that you can use any image editor that you like. I like to use Fast Stone, which is a nice image editor. So here we see the final picture. Uh, what I want to do is first do some rotating so it's at a better place. Okay. Then ideally we want to cut it. Drop it and maybe play a little bit around with the contrast to hide some of the bad artifacts around the edges. Maybe no. Yeah. I mean you need to play a lot with it to get to the right to the happiest spot. I really don't like doing it, so yeah, it's not ideal. It's not ideal, but it is going to do for this demonstration. Already we are seeing a lot of detail. I mean, yeah, uh, compared to the picture that I had here, it's pretty good, pretty good. You might also want to give it a try with some sharpening. Yeah. It just takes a lot of trial and error to find out the perfect uh, combination of all of these settings. Maybe light it a little bit. Okay, pretty good. can set the canvas size so then when you open it elsewhere it can have some black spaces around it and yeah that's that's pretty much it that's pretty much it save it and that's Jupiter for you of course ideally you want to look at it for a little from a little bit uh, distance so that It's uh, showing the amount of detail that it contains. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Actually, pretty happy with this one. Pretty happy. Pretty happy. And that's it. That's it, really. If you want to do the same process for Mars, for Saturn, it's always the same. 
spend a lot of time capturing, spend a lot, spend a lot of time uh, processing, stacking, sharpening <laughs> some final touches, then you have to post it somewhere. You spend easily many hours for one single picture, if you're lucky, if the capture was lucky. If not, it can be complete disaster, it can be literally a potato. That's that, have a good night, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, please click like. If you want to see some more on astronomy, see you next time, over and out, bye.